Psychopedic Reflection This is the first lecture for NV 2623 Primary Clinical Methods 3 Before I proceed to the lecture, let's redo a bit review on what you have learned about reflection for the last semester. In the last semester, under the topic of reflection, you have learned about objective reflection and subjective reflection. Basically, the objective reflection is to determine the refractive error based on basis optical principles of refraction. This is objective measurement which is no response from the patient needed. There is a few of equipments that we can use for objective reflection such as keratometer, retinoscope, autorefractometer, and optometers. The second method of reflection is subjective reflection, which is to determine the refractive error, basically based on response from the patient using combination of sphere and cylindrical lenses. This method normally been applied after the objective reflection. The procedures including BA measurement after objective reflection followed by finding the best sphere power, cylinder power, and monocular end point. When finished, you will do the same procedure on the other eye and proceed with the binocular balancing. Now, we proceed to the psychopathic refraction. What do you think the difference between the normal refraction? The difference is there is some additional procedures before and after the normal refraction. Remember, you will proceed to this method after you have done the non psychopathic refraction or you also can call it as a dry refraction. Basically, psychopathic refraction is to determine the total refractive error during temporary paralysis of ciliary muscle with installation of psychopathic drugs. So, you should know the difference between these three methods because without understanding these methods, you won't be able to do a proper examination and management on your patient. So, how to do the psychopathic refraction? Before that, I will explain to you the indication, contradictions and adverse effects of psychopathic refraction. This three issue is very important before you proceed to the psychopathic refraction. Remember, you can't proceed the psychopathic refraction to all your patients. What do you think? What type of patient you think that you can proceed with the psychopathic refraction? There are six indications to proceed with the psychopathic refraction, which is patients with pseudomyopia. Second one is patients with latent hyperopia. And the third one is trabismus patients with a suspected accommodative component such as accommodative isotropia. Beside these three indications, the psychopathic refraction can be done when you need to control the accommodation, which is could be in very young patients, in patients who are inconsistent and in point of refraction, in patients who have symptoms but apparently not significant refractive error. However, you also need to know there is a situation that you can't proceed with the psychopathic refraction even there is indications, which is patient with narrow angle glaucoma or narrow angles predisposed to disclosure. This is likely to occur with the psychopathic, which are generally used on much younger population. The second one is no hypersensitivity to a specific psychopathic and or its components. 
So, this is contradiction of the psychopagic reflection. Do not proceed the psychopagic reflection if your patient have one of these contradictions. Now you already know about the indications and also contradictions of the psychopagic reflection. But there are also some adverse effects using the psychopagic drugs, which is patient will have blur vision from psychoplegia effect. Patient also can have photophobia due to mydrasis effect and also systemic side effect. All the psychopagic drugs can give rise to systemic effects such as alter mental states and increase heart rates. However, except the tropical mite for which no serious adverse effects have been reported. But rarely, psychotic reactions have been reported in infants, children and teenagers following the use of cyclopentolate. It is possible that such reaction should occur when using cyclopentolate 0.5% or 1%. For example, disoriented and may hallucinate. However, recovery is spontaneous, which is after one or two hours, without any treatment being required. Psychopagic agents. What is the available psychopagic agents? Before that, we need to understand what is the mechanism of the psychopagic agents. Psychopagic agents act by antagonizing the muscarinic action of acetylcholine. They do so by blocking its action at structures inverted by postgangrenic parasympathetic nerve fibers. These agents paralyze the constrictor pupil as well as the ciliary muscle, causing mitosis as well as psychopathy. In our clinic, we use psychopentolate and tropical mine for psychopathic agent. But you also need to know that there is other psychopathic agents such as atropine and homotropine. Even though we are not using atropine and homotropine in our clinic, bear in your mind there is possibility you will use it when you are practiced outside. Because of that, you still need to know the mechanism of that psychopathic agent. There is a difference between dosage, time for onset, duration of maximum psychopathic effect, adverse effects, and systemic side effects for each psychopathic agent. For many years, atropine was the only psychopathic agent available. To bring about full psychoplegia in children, it must be instilled two or three times daily for three days before psychopagic reflection is done. The resulting psychopagia persists for seven to ten days and the mitosis can last as long as two weeks. Homotropin is a semi-synthetic alkaloid. It is not considered to produce sufficient psychopagia for use in children under the age of 15 years. Compared with atropine, only a few drops are required and the psychopagic effect begins in a matter of 45 to 60 minutes. Due to the availability of newer preparation, homotropine is used infrequently. Psychopentolate or psychogil is a short duration psychopagic agent available in 0.5 and 1% solutions. Psychopagia occurs within about 30 minutes and proceeds for as long as 24 hours. Even though it does not yield as complete a psychopagia in children as does atropine, but it to be a suitable alternative to atropine for children even under the age of 6 
if one or two drops of 1% solution are used. For children between the age of 6 and 16, one drop of 1% solution and for adult, one drop of 0.5% solution recommended. Tropical mite or mydrosil is also a short duration psychopedic. It is available in 0.5 and 1% for solution. For young adults, 3 drops of the 1% solution separated by a few minutes will bring about full psychopedia in about 30 minutes and recovery occurs within 2 to 6 hours. However, for your information, topical mark is widely used as a minority agent compared to the as a psychopathic agent. This is available of eye drop solution in our clinic. But be careful, the last picture is not the psychopathic agent. Make sure you read carefully the name of the eye drop solution before you use it. Atropine is highly toxic. If the drug is used, you need to give a proper instructions to the patient. What is the systemic effect of the atropine poisoning? Who are more likely to get the toxic side effects? Please do some reading on atropine based on this question. As I mentioned before, this procedure is done after the dry refraction or non-psychopagic refraction. The procedure of psychopagic refraction can be divided into three, which is precaution prior to installation, psychopagic refraction, and post-psychopagic refraction. The first one is precaution prior to installation. What you need to do is make sure you have covered the history taking which is should obtain any previous adverse reaction to the psychopathic or moderatic drugs or other ocular and systemic medication and also family history of glaucoma as well as ocular and general health. The second one is evaluate the anterior chamber depth using Van Herrick test or pen light test. Make sure the grade of anterior chamber depth is 2 and above. Do not proceed if the grade of anterior chamber is 1. I have uploaded an article in iFolio which is related to the evaluation of anterior chamber depth. Please read the article. The next one is measure the intraocular pressure as a baseline and screening for glaucoma. This is very important as you know with the psychopagic agent can cause acute glaucoma. The normal range of the intraocular pressure is 10 to 15 mm mercury. The last one is measure the visual acuity with correction by non psychopathic refraction. All this is a very important to prevent any adverse effect and as a baseline if anything happens after the psychopathic refraction. The second procedure is psychopathic refraction. Start with instill the psychopathic drugs to the right and left eye. Panther occlusion should be applied to avoid systemic absorption and please refer the video that I have uploaded in iFolio. After 10 minutes, check the accommodation and pupil size. If accommodation not reduced and no changes in pupil size, you can consider to instill the second eye drop of psychopathic drops. Do not instill the second drop if there are changes on accommodation and pupil size. You need to wait until the maximum psychopathic effect before you proceed to the refraction. The accommodation will gradually reduce over the time 
and once no more changes in accommodation, then you can proceed with the reflection, which is objective reflection followed by subjective reflection. Is the same technique reflection on non psychopathic reflection. Caution must be taken after psychopathic reflection, such as provide sunglasses while the poop is still dilated, advise not to drive or operate any moving machinery, and also advise of the expected time cause of psychopathia to wear off. The third one is post psychopathic refraction. This procedure done after one week psychopathic refraction. It is a normal refraction starting from VA measurement, refraction with objective and subjective refraction, evaluation of anterior chamber, and also intraocular pressure. For your information, there is some optometrists and ophthalmologists use local anesthetic with the psychoplegic agent. This is because the local anesthetic can be used with installation of psychoplegia to minimize the comfort and distress in young children. As I mentioned before, we can use pen heritage test or pen light -like test to evaluate the anterior chamber angle depth. This is the grading that we use for the anterior chamber angle depth. For the Van Herrick test, you will learn in primary care methods 5 in third year. So you will use the pen light -like test to evaluate the anterior chamber angle depth. The interpretation of pen light -like test is depending on the shadow when you shine the pen light to the temporal side of the eye. If no shadow or nasal part, then the angle is white, which is grade 4. But if there is a shadow, then you need to do the grading accordingly. This diagram shows how to do the grading for the Van Herrick test or pen light test. I have uploaded the article which is related to this test in the I volume. In conclusion, you should know the difference between the psychopathic refraction and non psychopathic refraction. In the same time, you should understand the indication and also contradiction before you proceed the psychopathic refraction and also adverse reaction of the psychopathic drugs. You also need to know the available psychopathic agent for the psychopathic refraction and able to explain the difference between the psychopathic drugs in terms of doses, time of onset, duration of residual effect, and also side effect. And the last one is able to explain the procedure of the psychopathic refraction. That's all lecture for psychopathic refraction. Thank you so much for your attention and have a nice day.